this is, if I were to pick a, a, a philosopher of late antiquity who in, sort of in his own terms was a success, you know, these sort of terms that Ado recognizes and describes, uh, Platonus. Uh, you know, as he's portrayed by Porphyry, he's kind of a, almost a pagan saint. He's someone who really has achieved a certain kind of holiness in that he is constantly uh, present at a, at a spiritual level. You know, for Plotinus, what this would mean is that uh, the intellect, the noose, is unfollowed. Okay? For each of us, our noose is unfollowed. It's not really present within this world. It's always at the higher level of uh, contemplating the one. But we're not aware of that. And he, at one point he says, he uses the, the metaphor, it's like being in a crowded room and a lot of people talking all at once. And there's one voice you need to pick out and listen to, the one person you're talking to. That's your news. You need to sort of reattune and focus to, to hear the news that is what you really are and become identical with that and not with all the distractions of our body existence. And the way that Porphyry portrays Plotinus, he was indeed that person who had achieved that, who was in a kind of continual state of presence with the one. Even though he was in this world doing things, lecturing, doing teaching, he actually had a very busy household. He had adopted children or wards anyway that lived in his house. Uh, that's where I think it's important to remember it's not only a state of moral integrity, which Plotinus arguably had, but it's also combined with a true knowledge of certain reality, right? Uh, and so, at least for the fathers, the, the place that Plotinus falls short is in the, the true knowledge, is that he, he thought of God only the one as an impersonal reality. Uh, and he thought of our reunion with the one as a kind of a contemplation in which the distinct identity of the person is lost. And that's simply not who God is and not who we are. Uh, so there is a failure, you know, both are important, the, the moral transformation but also the true knowledge. The, that transformation has to be based on the true knowledge and not a kind of a false philosophy. Uh, this is something I guess is very important uh, in our day and age. Uh, thinking, for instance, of uh, the trends within the traditional churches. Uh, that the core uh, philosophy, culture, everything that is produced by this world, you know, as uh, uh, satanic or secular, useless, whatever, counterproductive and stuff like that. Whereas what we see in the past, even uh, in these very say, critical approaches, and uh, somehow, like in the case of Sinaitis, uh, clearly pointing out the superiority of the Christ-centered philosophy, they still dealt with the context. They still dealt with the uh, uh, trends, cultural trends, philosophical thinking, and all that. So, uh, you know, yeah. Oh, no question. They were, in fact, some of the leading minds of the day. Uh, 